Welcome to the Welsh Woodman Workshop and in tonight's project we're going to be wood turning this large piece of oak into hopefully a natural edge bowl. So this log came from a really really large oak tree and I've sliced it down the middle to remove the central pith, so the central growth line and the next step then we're just going to trim off the corners with the chainsaw again to make it more of a round shape to make it easier to turn and then we're going to mount a face plate to the bark side and mount it up to the lathe. So Hope you enjoyed tonight's project. Just added a plywood sort of template, so that allows me then to see where I need to cut with my chainsaw to make this more into a round shape. Just taking the plywood template off, and I put the screw where it was when we cut around it with the chainsaw, and I've tried to do a slight undercut each side with the chainsaw just to make it easier for me to remove less material, and I've gone around this then, a faceplate with a chalk. We're gonna chisel away now this central area to get a flat, that we can screw the faceplate onto. And it's far better doing that than just screwing the faceplate to the, the bark, because sometimes it can come loose with your screws and things, and you always haven't got a, a level surface. So we've got it mounted up on the lathe. You can see there's very, very much not a, a circle, so we've got a bit of work to do to, to get him into the round. So I'm gonna start off by truing at the bottom, so flat face. Then I'm gonna start turning these corner edges in. Quite a slow speed, because it's a large piece. Wow, this is going to be a pretty bowl when it's done. So it's going to move the tool rest now more towards the side. That will allow me to take away a bit more of these corners. I always give them a spin before you turn them on, especially with big large pieces like this. The last thing you want it to do is to hit the tool post. Okay, time to sharpen up, look, no edge on that at all really, so, oak's quite tough stuff to work with, love it though, it's probably my favourite wood, just because of the grain pattern in it. So, another sharpen on this, so my sharpening system then, so I've got a 6 inch bench grinder, and a little sharpening jig I've made, so I've actually made a video how to make this, if you're interested, you can check out that video. So we're just going to dress the wheel with a diamond hose. Definitely want to be wearing a respirator for that part. And I'm using a homemade fingernail jig. So I've set it to two inches. I'm going to follow the profile round. And I'm looking for sparks coming over the tool edge. We're going to start working on now where we're going to be doing the foot. I'm going to go, because it's such a big piece, I'm going to go for a little mortise on the inside. So we're going to do the mortise and we can start shaping the, the bottom then, blending this in more. We're going to be using a set of dividers then that have been set up to our jaws. I've sharpened the point that I want to be digging in with. So your trailing point needs to be pointed downwards, otherwise you get some nasty catches. So I can take that out now with a parting tool. So push it inwards with the parting tool. And I'm going in, I'm trying to match the profile of my jaws now for this. Now the cool thing about turning larger bowls is when you come to move towards the centre, so the outside of the bowl is a lot faster than the inside of the bowl. So you have to sort of change your sort of speeds as you feed the tool across, which makes it a little bit of a challenge, which I find really fun. The outside profile all turned up now. Beautiful grain pattern coming through, because this is fairly green, so it's only been felled a couple of months ago. I'm going to still just do a little bit of light sanding with some coarse paper just to blend in any sort of blemishes, uh, especially around this sort of area where the bark transitions into that sappy area then, as that's going to make it easier to put some super glue to hold this in place. I'll just finish our sanding process, I'm going to be using a Fiddy's Wax Finish 
over the top. So this is like a paste wax. So it's more of a, a cream that comes in. But this is ideal. This is just going to help seal this in a little bit better. So it will control the uh, the drying out process. Uh, I've had good success using this stuff on the outside of my larger pieces. And it helps really accentuate the grain pattern. I'm going to go for like a matte type finish rather than a shiny finish on, on this piece. As I turn it out I'm going to leave the, the bark quite thick on the inside so I can decide whether I want to remount this and do a, a return or whether I want to let it sort of warp slightly. It depends on how much it warps, sometimes it can add to the character, we're going to see. So what I need to do is test my jaws out to see if they fit in the gap that we've made, a little mortise. A nice tight fit, I like that. So I'm going to, because that's mounted pretty well on there, I'm just going to keep that on then. And we're going to flip this round, mount this beast then the other way around. And get turned in the inside, it's the easy bit. So we've got it mounted around the other way now. And you can see this is a huge piece. So what we always need to do before we turn this back on is make sure the speed is turned down to zero. Always bring me back to my rugby days and trying to catch the thing as it flies off. So some gorgeous grain patterns coming through here. So all we need to do now is turn out the centre and we're going to try and keep the bark on as we're doing that, which is always the challenging bit. We might need to apply a little bit of super glue. We'll see how it goes in the initial turn. I'm going to bring him up gradually, tiniest bit of wobble on that, but I think we can deal with it. And you can see how sturdy this lathe is, look. Not cap was on top, they're not even vibrating off. So, really impressed with it. We're going to establish where we're going to leave the bark rim to. If you've watched my The Natural Edge Bowl, I always suggest leaving quite a thick rim, you can always turn back. But if you start off small, you, you can never sort of glue the wood back on. So. Oh, good tip as well. What you want to do before you take your central mass away, really, really work on getting a good finish on these edges here. Because what will tend to happen is, as soon as you take the central support away, these will vibrate somewhat. And you don't tend to get a nicer finish, which results in doing more sanding. If you're like me, you hate sanding. So it's worth doing uh, getting a really good finish on these before you sort of work this away. So that's what I'm doing at the moment is, Downward hill cut, downward hill cut, just to remove material, and uh, making sure that I'm not catching the uh, the wing of the tool into the piece because that's that's quite nasty. Then we definitely don't want to do that with a bark edge. So I'm just literally working down, establishing these walls. Then I'll start getting rid of the central bit. So I've changed over to my curve tool rest now. That just makes it easier for the, uh, especially for deeper bowls, to, to match the profile of the curve. Taking things away slowly. Just using a depth stop then, and we're going to gauge how far we need to go in. We need to take off about an inch, so that gap there. Be very careful we're not going beyond that, because we might be hitting the uh, the mortise in there. So we've just done the easy bit in sort of just hogging away material in the centre. 
And what I'm going to do, because I've got some little tool chattering marks in there, because I'm literally at the sort of maximum length of my tool in there, but it's touching the end. So what I'm going to do is blend those in with my Hamlet Brig Brother tool. So this is brilliant. So it's like a little scraper on the end of there. So I'm going to be able to just get into that corner area to blend it in a little bit more. The great thing about this tool is you can really, it's got a really solid handle on it and you want it to sort of be cutting downward slightly with it so you, your tool rest can be afford to be a little bit up. Right, next step then we're going to do a little bit of smooth sanding I'm going to do it in the direction of the green. That's pretty good. Happy with the shape. <laughs> Probably one of the biggest pieces I've turned as well, so quite quite happy with this all together. So we're just going to do sanding. We'll come back when we're ready to put a finish on. So we've just finished the sanding process now. Just adding some wax on the inside, and the wall thickness throughout is an even thickness, and that should help this dry out at an equal rate. So all the wax does is sort of slow as the drying process, and you're less likely to get sort of warps that way. So we're going to leave this for a couple of months, uh, then we could decide if we want to mount it again and return it and I've left enough thickness in to do that or we can just let this warp slightly and it should be okay so here's the finished piece massive old bowl but it was a lot of fun turning I like the fact that we've got these sort of high points made a bit more challenging to turn but I think it looks pretty neat uh, overall so thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed tonight's project, please consider subscribing to my channel by hitting the link below. It's free, but it really helps me out in making more woodworking videos. So I hope you have a great night. Dielchen war, nostar.